Prime Minister to deliver a seven-minute round introducing the case that stands in his name. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hello, ladies and gentlemen in this house. Today, I'm honored to be standing here. So, we're going to talk about Myanmar. We all know that they had autocracy by the army, and they're trying to turn into democracy, and that is what the West is also hoping. That is what the people in Myanmar are hoping. What happened recently? Suki and has been allowed to participate in the election with a landslide, and the election ended with a landslide victory by the National League of Democracy and Suki. Right? This, uh, this shows the people of Myanmar, Myanmar wants to turn into democracy. They are hoping for democracy. And why West is putting on sanctions, has been putting on sanctions, because they wanted Myanmar to turn into democracy. Right? And, gov and with the, uh, after the election, the government has started to cooperate with LNO, has started to make reforms. Government has started to cooperate with LNLD. LNLD and they're creating tag with Suki and NLD to change, to make Myanmar a better place. And now, what would happen with the sanction? It is easier for them to trade and interact with China, right? Because there are a lot of walls to interact with West, to trade with West. And it is difficult for Myanmar to government to interact with Western nations. And, and the bond between Myanmar and China will be stronger and stronger with the sanction, and which will make Ma Myanmar or, you know, or run toward Chinese way. It will not bring Myanmar closer to democracy. It's making it difficult for Myanmar. And now, West is wishing and West wish and Myanmar's people's wish will not be fulfilled because they will not move toward democracy. And what did, and I would like to explain to you now what this plan means. It will show to the Myanmar government that the West nations accept and welcome the reforms starting in Myanmar. And after, uh, what will happen after plan is that it will be easier for Myanmar government to interact with the West because there will be no more sanctions which prohibit them, which makes it difficult for Myanmar government, Myanmar you know, corporations to interact with the West nations to trade with them. And it will, taking this motion will not push Myanmar toward China. And when the bond between West and Myanmar gets stronger, the chance for Myanmar's system to change to democracy will be higher and the chance that possibility of that chance will be faster. And this plan will speed up and promote the reform in Myanmar. Right, so what is happening to uh, people in Myanmar, what has been happening to them, their fundamental right was not fully ensured. They did not have the freedom to speech, they did not have all those of fundamental rights and they are not having the life that they want. That is why they are hoping for democracy. That is why the Myanmar people in Myanmar voted for NL NLD and that is why they all support Aung San Suu Kyi, right? And I would now like to tell you why this sanction is going to be deterrence for the, uh, the reform in Myanmar. For, I would like to give you an example of Iraq. What, what sanction did to them. Uh, with the sanction in Iraq, the life expectancy, the infant mortality, and what did not get better, their economy did not develop. It did not help the people in Iraq, it did not help the government of Iraq. And it did not, you know, uh, allow the Iraqi society to develop. It actually deterred them from developing. And what happened was, because the lives of Iraqi people did not get better, they had to rely on those who had power, which is the current regime of, in that nation. Right? People had to rely on them, it did not help them become better, and that shows that sanction can be deterrent for the organic change. In the, and what is happening in Myanmar right now is that the, there is an organic change starting. It is happening right now. That is why people voted for NLD. Wait a second. And it is happening. But with the sanction that West put on them, it will make it difficult for them to develop. Yes, ma'am. So why you can say this hope itself is enough to stop the sanction? Because this is just newly established. And why you can say yeah. this would ensure Okay, newly established. Yes, that also shows that it is starting to change, right? 
For decades, they did not have this change. The autocracy by the army has been kept on. Myanmar and Aung San Suu Kyi was locked up. She did not have the chance to speak up. She did not have the chance to be, you know, in the government, interacting to change the Myanmar society. But now that they can, that paradigm has ended. She has come out from the locking up. The NLD has gained some power. Of course, they still need more power to change Myanmar and help them turn into democracy. But with this tension, that change is being deterred, right? So they're trying to change which the West should help them change. They want to, the West want Myanmar to change into democracy. Why deter them? We want to help them, so let's lift up the sanctions they have right now. For example, with the organic exchange, like, you know, a country like Australia and the United States of America has actually lifted some of its sanctions. Because, why? Because they want Myanmar to speed up with its change, with speed up with its reform, right? If the Myanmar government and its society cannot develop with the help of NLD, people will, may start to doubt the power of NLD, NLD, right? The people might think that maybe the life with the the former regime was better. We do not want that to happen, right? What this sanction is going to do from now on is that it is going to prevent uh, Myanmar to turn into democracy. It will not lead to what West wants. The whole reason why West put this sanction in the first place is because they wanted their, the, the former regime, the autocracy by the army to end. They wanted Myanmar to turn into democracy. But so after, what will happen after plan is because we lift the sanction, because we let Myanmar's society do develop, because we make the Myanmar people's lives better, people are going to support NLD, people are going to wish more for democracy, it will make more changes, speed up the reform in Myanmar, and that will fulfill the wish for the, of the West that Myanmar wants to turn into democracy, that it will fulfill the wish for the people of Myanmar who want their country to become democratic. That is why we are proud to propose this motion. Thank you. Thank you. I thank the Prime Minister for his remarks and now call upon the Leader of the Opposition to open up the Opposition's case in a seven-minute speech. Chair Herrick. Speaker, how is this gentleman in this house today? So, Myanmar has just about to change. Even if just chosen us, uh, just Aung San Suu Kyi has chosen, it's not the time actually we can recognize this as a democratize. We believe they are still on the process of democracy. In that sense, we believe international society have a responsibility to look or ensure the full democracy by keeping the sanction or gradually take the process of moving out the sanction. We believe it's not the time to actually cut out all the, all the sanctions we put for the Myanmar to prevent the revive from revive of the military government. So very proud to oppose. So I have two things to talk about today. First one is why put sanction is actually res those countries who put sanction have a responsibility to ensure the democracy or full democratized Myanmar. And second point is how this proposal is actually counterproductive to ensure democracy. But before that, some rebuttals to the speaker. So he said today's problem is the bond between China. Because bond between China is strong and because this sanction is preventing Myanmar to have a relationship with West, that is the problem they want to solve. But Mr. Speaker, we couldn't hear any reasons why this bond with China will be actually decreased by taking this proposal. There was no reasoning. And secondly, we really, uh, this bond will not be changed even after them because the bond is actually strong enough in the status quo. And that means they can actually continue this bond even after them. We cannot understand why this happened. We rather think this would not happen after them. And also, he said, 
uh, he didn't mention any justification that those countries can actually become irresponsible since in this, in this time only because the Aung San Suu Kyi was actually chosen and LD was actually chosen. So we cannot, why we can say uh, there was no reason, why we can say just chosen LD, LD is the time we can say this is fully democratized. There was no reason. We rather think that just chosen is not really fully democratized. I'm gonna talk about this in my second point. So, and also he somehow talked about organ exchange, but really this was, the, the reasoning was not really told. So I'm gonna talk about this, why this would actually happen after that in my second, uh, why this would not happen and rather counterproductive in my second point. So because he didn't set any reasoning and just said the necessity of the sanction or so forth, I think this is enough about us to previous speaker. So moving on to our first point. So we believe international society or country who put sanction on Myanmar have have responsibility to ensure those effects of sanction because if this democracy will not actually ensured in the in the Myanmar, this sanction will be just an intervention, just intervene the sovereignty of Myanmar, and just the situation we will get worse. So we believe because well, what is the reason is this? The first reason is because those because those country is actually already intervened the sovereignty of Myanmar. In that sense, this is the reason why they are responsible for the situation that Myanmar faced by doing the sanctions. And second reason is the purpose of the society regard those sanctions as legitimate way to change Myanmar is to bring democracy. So if we cannot ensure this democracy or if, if we are not sure about the democracy, we believe this, this letter please, leads uh, these uh, these situations are not uh, these situations should be recognized as is irresponsible situation and also um, so what we are saying what we are talking about is that we are not sure still the situation of Myanmar is free democratized and we are not we are not see the consequence of the, those democracy that they are talking about so in that sense because it is not really ensured we believe the remain just stopping the sanction and remain half finished democracy is just irresponsible acts of the society international society so we believe this is just an intervention of sovereignty and because this consequence if this consequence is worse we believe this is not meaningful way to do so so we we, we so we cannot legitimize this yes sir. so what do you think about that um, example we, that we gave about iraq do you think that was the do you think that, um those countries with sanctions fulfill the responsibility by the like, of making the condition worse in, in the new Iraq, in Iraq. We believe we are still not sure about this because this is just one example in Iraq, right? So we believe this situation is completely far from that situation of Iraq because Myanmar is not Myanmar. We, are, uh -huh. we should talk about Myanmar, right? No, thank you. So we are just second point: how counterproductive. So in the status quo, because those international society think, actually think, gradual stopping of sanctions is the necessary way. That's why EU is actually trying to stop sanctions in the gradual process. That is because this, this, they think sanction is actually needed for the society to provide a stable democracy or ensure the democracy. Why is that? Because in a sense, because they have still incentive to try to support new government. We really to bring the democracy. We really what we should change is the citizens' mindset because they never experience the democracy. They really don't understand the democracy. What they are feeling, what why they support those LD is that because those citizens think they would bring the better future, not really think this democracy is better or not. So really by keeping the sanction because those new government is actually incentives to bring those better future. In that sense, they, those government, I mean the LD, is actually have a full responsibility. And also, secondly, because citizens, citizens have also the incentives to actually support those LD because, because they support LD. So that's why the democracy, it's gradual process is needed. So I hope that what we have is that we believe this situation is just counterproductive because suddenly the pro Suddenly, that power that in the status quo is incentivized citizens to support LD will be decreased. So, in that sense, this is really harmful because it's doubtful whether this would actually 
incentivize people to support LD because even if those other party, I mean the military government is actually revived and try to control the citizens, citizens can actually can have possibility to vote for not for LD because because they are not understanding the democracy at all. So because in that process we believe we cannot say those uh, stopping the sanctions would actually ensure the democracy and because people think it was better for uh, because people cannot actually <coughs> know what is democracy we believe this the consequence is really bad so because of this reason we are very proud of us thank you I thank the leader of the opposition for her remarks and now I call upon the deputy prime minister to continue the government's case this seven minutes state chair here gentlemen this Saturday. Okay, so far, us, the government side, has been consistent in saying we need to protect the will and benefit for the people in Myanmar who, who wants democracy, and by taking this plan, we can promote uh, promote these citizens. However, the opposition has, side has been mentioning we, we have to keep on imposing sanction in order to teach them democracy. Their logic was very weak, and I, I would like to prove how our, um, how our plan works and its mechanism. Okay, in my speech, first, I would like to refute the opposition bench. Secondly, I would like to um, re uh, reconstruct my partner's speech. And lastly, I would like to introduce our new points. Okay, first, the rebuttals. Okay, the, um, the uh, opposition side mentioned that under the status quo, um, the West are imposing sanctions on Myanmar, and they're already intervening so sovereignty. And so, lifting sanctions now is irresponsible. However, please think about the motive of why the, these West countries imposed sanctions in the first place. Well, in the first place, the West put sanctions on Myanmar because in order to promote democracy, because until just recently, Myanmar was under the autocracy of the army force, and for times in 20 years, um, Ms. Um, um, Suki was locked up in the house and democracy was hindered. That was why the West that section's motive was to promote democracy. However, now that the election began, and now that the uh, society is starting to change, there is no justification left for these countries, uh, these West countries keep on imposing the, um, imposing the sanction. And also about the um, example about Iraq, the uh, leader of the opposition said, there's no, we couldn't under, um, understand that if, um, Iraq and Myanmar is different, so somehow it's, um, it works differently. However, um, they, um, they didn't show this. Um, the our example of Iraq, we wanted to show that um, actually um, sanction itself is bad, uh, and I will be mentioning it in my point later on. So please listen then. And okay, um, so in order to um, in order to for um, the um, government side to win, we can we we will prove that after taking plan, um, it, it'll bring better situation for people in Myanmar and we'll be like to show the mechanism. Okay, about and also about the um, second their second point, counterproductive to democracy. They say that citizens don't understand democracy, they just want a better future. And they don't they do not know democracy. However, this is not true. Well at least democracy ensures people freedom of speech and freedom to build your own country by your own hands without having been um, uh, oppressed by the army. That's what these people want. So at least these people have the ideal they, for uh, the ideal society for people in Myanmar is democracy, and the um, burden of proof for opposition is why sanction leads to understanding of democracy they haven't explained, and uh, sanction itself is very, is very negative. Okay, moving on to the recons uh, reconstruction of my partner's speech. Well, my partner mentioned that until election people were oppressed and there's no freedom of speech, so people voted for the NL NLD. And, um, but the opposition side refuted that this doesn't mean that they want democracy. However, this ver is very um, um, it contradicts to their point that we, they should promote democracy. That's a consensus under um, for both government and opposition side on this round. So their point doesn't stand for uh, uh, for this. And also. Um, 
the uh, opposition side mentioned that people want democracy, and my partner clearly showed that it's not enough. It will st still take time for um, citizens to make team up and make movement to abolish sanctions, to insist to the West. And until then, China has good chance of making strong, um, strong bonds by member, ma uh, Myanmar. And this bond will weaken after plan because why? Because for the West countries, there's uh, many uh, powerful countries, like America, England. They're powerful enough to compete with China. So apparently, um, relatively thinking of the status quo and after plan, in the after plan, the bond with China and Myanmar will weaken. Okay, now moving on to our points. Okay, before that, if you have any POIs. No? Okay, moving on. Um, well, um, in my speech, I'd like to um, uh, further um, extend my partner's points by saying the reason of why China, the bond between China and Myanmar um, will um, keep on being strong un under the status quo if you don't take this motion. Okay, if we don't take this motion, well, considering, well, even though the society is in Myanmar has changed in the election, and, but army still has seats in the Congress and um, um, a large number of seats. So, um, the under the status quo, because the West impose, still imposed tension on Myanmar, as for Myanmar, it's easier to trade with China than, to, than the West. So that this is the one aspect that their um, bond is getting stronger. And another another reason is that having tension, like the example in Iraq, why did pe people, uh, no thank you, people uh, in um, Iraq, um, what happened in, during, uh, by the sanction is that people started to have hatred to the um, to the West countries who impose sanctions, and this will be this this clearly shows that sanction is ineffective and uh, will um, will uh, at this rate the bond between China and Myanmar will be, uh, be stronger, and um, the Myanmar citizens' will to get, um, uh, achieve democracy will be hindered, and also. Um, about um, the sanction itself, why sanction itself is bad. It's because it hinders development economically and peace and order. And what happens here is that society gets devastated and it gets destroyed from inside because you cannot develop. Um, if you get stop developing, a nation cannot stand itself. Um, I'll take it later, basically. And um, um, so what happens is that the citizens have to um, rely on the upper class. Okay. So why could say those sanctions will be keep going on even if they are devastated? Because the purpose was different to democratize, right? Okay. Why you can say that? Just well, the, um, well, it's for countries who impose sanctions. <coughs> it takes their time to remove the sanctions, and the, it, it's not uh, it's not catching up with the Myanmar's um, um, Myanmar's um, very fast development. So that's why we have to take this action now. And the upper class it has power and capital and social status. That's why citizens has to depend on this. Um, depend on them and as for Myanmar unfortunately the army still, still strong holds strong power and after taking this plan West will be sending official message to be friendly with Myanmar so the bond between West will be um, increased and democrat these are democratic countries so we will promote and further stimulate Myanmar's democracy which is our goal and the um, and the principle for um, when we can put sanction is that when it's the only and last way to promote for citizens both to speak up when, and when imp to improve the infringement of human rights. Sanction a member under, under status quo, as my partner mentioned clearly, it doesn't feel match with either of these criteria. So um, there's no necessity, and th uh, there's a necessity for immediate re um, abolish. And uh, for all these reasons, we beg to propose. Thank you. <laughs> I thank the Deputy Prime Minister for her remarks and now call upon the Deputy Leader of the Opposition to continue the Opposition's case in a seven minute speech. Here, here.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today's debate consensus is that we should achieve the democracy of the Myanmar, right? Actually, they just only focus on the status quo, democracy is impossible or like that. But after taking this proposal, how can we change? They didn't mention any any mechanism about it and it's DPT already talk so the, it's too late even if the whip speakers talk about it. Okay, moving so and uh, I will explain how after taking this proposal democracy would more devastated and go back to the previous uh, uh, environment. Moving on to my Lifitation. I have uh, two lifitation. Firstly, they say that uh, for, somehow they say that we have to, our burden of proof is that sanction is effective or like that. So, but it is contradiction of the, those, this side. Actually, first speaker came up here and say because of previous sanction, the Go military government now changing or like that. And then second speaker come and said why the sanction work or like that. It is a contradiction. So actually we can't see the uh, stance of this side. And secondly, they mainly want, want to say the Iraq example. However, however, Mr. Speaker, this example just showing the, uh, just showing if uh, just showing that if we s continue sanction, what happened? But we didn't sh see that after taking this proposal, if we s stop sanction, what happened to Iraq, Mr. Mr. Speaker? So there's more possibility to uh, that actually the situation would be more and more worse, and democratization would don't come. Moving on to my uh, <coughs> substantive matter, I have two points. First point is about how, how under the status quo, the, uh, keeping the status quo is actually there's high, high possibility to change the more to the more democratization. And the second point is that uh, how after taking this proposal, this situation go worse and uh, democratization doesn't become, become and uh, even if they, they did democratization, it becomes social democratization like, like Russia. So moving on to my first point. Oh, no, okay, take one. Okay. Why, you have to explain why sanction needs to understand of democracy for citizens under your model. Please explain. I will explain it in my, this, this point. Actually, thanks to sanction, uh, the democratization would be more likely to achieve. Why? Uh, there's, uh, there's two reasons. For, uh, firstly, what, what is the current situation of Myanmar? Actually, the influence of the military government are sti still big, and they actually con control the Myanmar's situation so much. But because of the uh, sanction, actually, their power de decrease uh, gradually. They lose, uh, f firstly, they lose their, their power because they can't, get, uh, they can't get money because there's economic sanction and so trade profit is li limited. So, and secondly, because of sanction, actually, criticism from the uh, citizen is so big. Citizen criticize uh, criticize the military government not not because it in in order to uh, want the democracy, but because they want the they want the economical benefit. Actually, the, some of the people can't can uh, in poverty because of uh, economic sanction. There's influence of economic sanction, so they want to change. So that's crit criticism, right? So, so actually, gr we gradually <coughs> change the those, such kind of criticism still 
may uh, decrease but still continue right so and uh, me also military can't uh, can't get enough money no thank you right so actually the they gradually have a chance to gradually change the, uh, uh, if stop the some kind of undemocratic un thing and and then uh, more stop some kind of economic sanction and then again improve and then again stop other economic sanction right it is better better way and uh, moving on to my second point how after taking this proposal uh, what happened yes actually stopping because of stopping sanction they they don't lose the chance to change change it right they, uh, so why it there's two reasons firstly the criticism from citizens would be weaker right because even if uh, they are uh, they don't military government don't change the uh, they can get profit of the trade or like that so citizens don't suffer the criticism don't come to the military government secondly by getting the trade profit profit because there's no economic sanction actually military chain charge their power increase by such as increasing more soldier or like that maybe more authorization to citizen increase or uh, they start to capture or like that even if the election in service start actually such kind of election would be sufficient like Russia which the the president uh, were elected from the uh, previous uh, KGB member or like like that as as like of it the pre member of the president would be chosen from the previous military government or like that so citizen would suffer the situation as they, so that's why we proudly oppose this motion thank you for his remarks and now I'd like to cover it with to deliver a seven minute whip speech here here. So we have been consistently telling you that bad consequences occur when the sanction prolongs or it takes on two months, right? We gave you an example of Iraq, which they did none about, about this kind of thing, right? So we and also we they said that Iraq does not like stand as an example, but we say that this example actually stands as an um, reason to why to show why that um their principle about why the country has the responsibility to, to continue sanction until it um, uh, realizes democracy does not stand, right? It's, this is a clear example that shows that this principle is not absolute, right? It, in some cases, that when the pro sanction goes pro prolonged too much, um, it actually uh, did not, it actually makes the countries responsible for their um, their suffers that they have put upon those countries. That is why we beg to oppose. I mean, propose. Okay, so let me uh, go on to wrap up this debate. Um, well, maybe talk about the um, why it has to be done now, and um, and why um, about the principle levels, and I'll go on one by one. Well, the leader of opposition yes actually told about the responsibility of the um, the countries that actually you know can um, that these um, countries have to do so. But we have been consistent in telling you that well, these if these con uh, conditions continue, this will actually further worsen the conditions of that, the situation in Myanmar, right? We have been telling you examples. 
and the deputy leader of the opposition told you that economical sanction actually um, limits the economy, right? So what we are, that is um, supporting our argument because what those Myanmar regime will do is to rely on China, right? If the economic sanction is there, those countries will, uh, Myanmar will rely on China, which actually hardens the bond. We think this is dangerous. As we have been telling you, the compete there is a need for the competence in this market, right? For the U.S. and those Britain to actually come into the market of Myanmar, actually um, stimulate the economy of Myanmar. That is what we need for development. So we say that sanction is should only be done when the, um, there's no chance for the country to change itself, right? So it will be actually forced to worsen the condition when it's done, even after the basis of the country is complete. We don't want country to be weak when the, um, the country democrat, um, realizes democracy, right? We want a strong country when the country actually accomplishes its goal for democracy. We say that this is uh, the timing of the withdrawal of uh, intervention is very important. The timing is very important, and it, it should be done now, right now, in Myanmar, right now, right? Okay? So, um, um, they have yeah, they have not given too much about the um, those um, practical points, whereas we gave points about um, how we clearly proved to you how organic change is um, necessary in this case, not intervention from other countries, not sanctions that limit the uh, potential of the country, but organic change, the, the motives of people and those um, the people and those uh, the will of people and the movement, the movement that's shifting right. Uh, with speed right now is what is necessary for an organic change, right? This um, sanction will actually slow down the development and the motives of those people through the organic change, right? We do not see these um, as uh, uh, important. This we rather see this as a harmful thing for the um, Myanmar and their country to develop them, develop, develop democracy to actually um, get back the fundamental rights that they have not uh, been able to receive. So. We see that in terms of practical things, well, they talked about like economic sanctions will weaken the um, like uh, mi uh, military regime, but that is a supportable argument that um, will actually they will get closer to China. That uh, that works for our argument of China, that uh, this will actually be um, for for the wait a moment, for the be um, powerful for Myanmar to uh, actually for us for the Myanmar to actually realize democracy. Yes. Well, we consistently told you why the bond with China will change after taking this proposal. Well, I didn't see anything, but um, well, I didn't see anything. But I think this um, the logic, logic you gave me about how um, the economy limits uh, the limit of the economy actually makes the reliance upon China is so a huge. This influence is so huge. This I think this argument will be enough to rebut your um, explanations about that, right? So let me talk about the principles about this argument. This is the responsibility. They, the uh, country to put on sanction has a responsibility to actually watch them until then. However, we told you not so. The, because we say that when we put the sanction, we need a justifiable reason for a sanction, right? What we have been consistently telling you from the first is that these um, countries have been put in sanctions on Myanmar because um, uh, the country cannot change by itself, right? There's no way that um, Myanmar will change. As Suji Suji Suu Kyi has been locked in, in her house for t 20 years, there is no way in which the country itself can change. The people can act, people were not able to speak out. These um, people didn't have any rights. That is why sanction was needed um, to actually change, to shift the government, to actually pressure on the regime of the opposition, right? So that is why, um, the, that is the justification for putting on sanction. Well, as we have told you, um, Suu Kyi um, has already been elected, and we can see a change, in, and we can see democracy getting um, inside in the fast, fast speed inside Myanmar, right? We say that this uh, will has completed the meaning of sanction, in which was to create the basis of democracy, right? Because we have already given an example of Iraq, how when it prolongs, it will actually worsen the condition of the country. So we say that. Um, the justification of the um, to intervene into uh, to put sanction on the country has been already um, um, finished. They have already ended the objective. So we see that there are no justifiable reasons to put sanction on these uh, um, on these um, on Myanmar. So um, what we have told you is that um, <coughs> um, what we told you is that well sanction actually um, deprive or slows down on the development of a country of a state. And um, this is what actually um, Myanmar means at the current, current status quo to actually be strong when they actually realize it's democracy, which can be um, done through organic change, uh, not through by putting continuing sanction, uh, rely on like countries like China or Russia. We see that um, hatred uh, towards if we continue this um, 
uh, continue this uh, plan. The, uh, there will be, like my um, partner said, there will be hatred. There will be like a uh, sense of um, uh, like those kind of things to the people who people on the countries who put sanctions on Myanmar, right? So we see that this uh, will be dangerous because that, that could actually be something to change the minds of those people. That because the regime can use this as a political tool to actually make them support for their um, regime, right? So we see that this sanction will be also um, dangerous because it could be used as, uh, in that way too. So that is why we should strongly think that uh, we have explained fully about the mechanism, the organic change, and about the um, relations of China with their support. And also we have one in, well, in terms of um, principles where we have told you about the, um, that if we continue, they will not achieve the responsibility that the um, opposition wants to achieve. That is why we bet to propose. Thank you. I thank the government whip for its remarks, and I call upon the opposition whip to deliver a seven-minute whip speech on behalf of the opposition. Here, here. So, first of all, they never explained enough reason to stop all sanctions immediately. We never oppose the sanction, uh, the uh, sanction itself, but because it is uh, because it is helped to democratize, we also believe. However, uh, however, clearly showed how fully stop sanction is against democratization. So that's why uh, that's why we say after take this plan is is more severe most severe situation for the Myanmar people, so that's why we oppose today's plan. So let me sum up today's debate in two criteria. Firstly, democratized movement, no, uh, movement now is enough to stop all sanctions or not. And secondly, uh, secondly about, uh, hmm? secondly, uh, hmm? sorry, uh, <laughs> secondly, is this a time to stop all sanctions uh, Huh? Secondly, uh, the, which, which is beneficial for Myanmar people uh, keeping status quo or not? So let me explain one by one. So, so firstly, they said that because, because Suchi agreed to participate in election, so it is, it is perfect situation. They already democratized. But that is but that is not true because this fact is not automatically Myanmar are fully democratized. So that's why we say this is not a time to uh, time to throw away all sanction. So uh, so they assume this situation is perfect for Myanmar, but there is no reason. And we believe uh, when democratize, no thank you, democratize uh, when we can uh, recognize that Myanmar is. Myanmar is fully democratized. It's not only the one election, but but keep election again and again. This is the uh, this is the important process. So that's why we say under the status quo is not enough. And secondly, they said about under the status quo there is organic change and and sanction and sanction is is just an obstacle of of the status quo. <laughs> but we don't think so. That is not important because. Uh, because of their plan, uh, after taking the proposal, Myanmar lose way to do do also organic change. So that's why uh, this is because of military government revive, as as my leader of opposition so told you. So that's why after taking the proposal, there is less possibility to democratize. Rather, there is no possibility forever for Myanmar to democratize. So that's why we say this is more more harsh situation and and. The, and what they told you about organic change will not occur. So that's why we say this is this is problematic. No, thank you. So let me move into the second issue, which is beneficial for Myanmar people. So, so there is three main points. Uh, firstly, about firstly, the uh, prime minister came up here and and told you that 
sanction is a problem because because of sanction they they uh, they strong their relationship with with China. So that is the problem. But we told we clearly told you after the disposal there is no change because. Uh, because even obligate to another country to have relationship, because relationship with China is so strong under the status quo, so yeah, Myanmar will not change. Myanmar, Myanmar still have strong relationship with, uh, with China. So that's why their problem never ever solved, we believe. So that's why there is no workability of this plan. So that's why we say this plan is not beneficial for Myanmar people. And secondly, uh, they told you about example of Iraq. So Iraq as a as a sanction is bad, but but this is not important. Why is that? Because uh, no, thank you. This is the only one example. They assume that all sanction has only bad effect. But if that's the truth, under the status quo, no country try to do any sanction. We uh, why why under the status quo we do sanction is that. We believe sanction has a good effect to that country, so that's why we do. But they never, they, they never think about it, and only only break up Iraq Iraq example and assume sanction itself is just bad for the people. So that's that's wrong. And no, thank you. And because and we also told you because purpose of sanction itself is helping democratize of Myanmar. So what they told you is is totally not true. And and thirdly, about they said about sanction locked up Myanmar, but that this is also not true. We uh, we consistently told you uh, sanction is not to lock up Myanmar people, but but rather help help other people. We said the sanction not for attack Myanmar, but give a hand for their give a hand for them to democratize by themselves. So that's why we say. And uh, sorry, and because West West have actually incentive to pro incentive to the incentive to Myanmar to democratize because they are pro democracy. So that's why we say uh, this sanction is not just obstacle, but helping people. People. So that's why we say this is this is not a, uh, not a harm to Myanmar people, but a benefit for the Myanmar people. And <coughs> and lastly. Uh, lastly, the whip speaker came here and bring you a new matter. Like time is very important. Yes, exactly. Timing is important. We also believe. So that's why we think this is not time to do. Uh, no time to stop all sanctions. So let's let the government analysis. Sanction is needed when country itself cannot democratize with others' help. We prove under the status quo is that situation. Under the current situation. Uh, Myanmar cannot, uh, Myanmar cannot uh, democratize by themselves without sanction because uh, because we we consistently told you because uh, military government revived so that way uh, and government never showed enough reason what it uh, enough reason what it told is under the status quo there is a little possibility of becoming a. Uh, of getting democracy, and after the plan, maybe they change only that. But we show clear, uh, clear analysis how under the status quo they cannot democratize by themselves, and how sanction is actually the limit, limit that so powerful government. So that's why we say, we say after they take this plan, only, only so powerful government revive, and the democratized way is lose. So that's why we say. Plan is harmful, so that's why to protect Myanmar people and to protect democracy, we always thank you. I thank the opposition whip for her remarks, and now call upon the leader of the opposition to conclude the opposition's case in a four-minute reply. State Chair Hare.
speaker, we told you when start up today's debate how just Aung San Suu Kyi got a seat in the Congress cannot mean the democracy itself. We told you how this is not enough to actually stop the sanction because this is not free recognized as democracy and that's why we believe it is the irresponsible acts of international society to actually stop these sanctions in right now. So, so we couldn't hear any reason why chosen or just get seats directly connect to democracy or just keeping the, or just out of plan this democracy that they are talking about will continue. So we're very proud of course. I have two questions to sum up today's, today's bit. First one is whether it is democracy right now. And second one is organic, uh, no, out of plan if this, this proposal is just try just make those democracy that they're talking about continue. So let me explain one more one. So is it democracy? So the government side said organic change occur. That is why we can say this status quo is status quo is already democratized. But we doubt it in many reasons. We told you that it's just just chosen as as a member of Congress. That it does not mean they, those citizens are free understand what it means to have a democracy, what it means to actually vote for the society, what it means to actually actually democratize. So in that sense, they are not really understanding or they don't have a concept themselves that they can actually understand democratize. In that sense, we cannot say this is democracy itself because we told you why those why citizens actually support Aung San Suu Kyi was that they are actually oppressing. In that sense, this is not free democracy and they didn't say, they didn't prove how this status quo is enough, situation of status quo is enough. We couldn't hear any mechanism how keeping the status quo is actually, no, keep just taking proper, just, sorry, just, so they, we told you how there is actually possibility remain that opposition party will actually revive and they will just continue to destroy, they will likely to destroy this democracy that we can actually hope for. So we can hear any mechanism how this revival will not occur in the first place. In that sense, we believe this there is a strong possibility remain that we cannot call this situation in the status quo is demo free democratized. So in that sense, because this is a concept to be internal society has a responsibility towards the action of sanctions, we believe the we believe we believe there is no there this is not legitimate, actually irresponsibly let those sanctions cut out. So moving on to our second point. After plan, whether this would continue democracy. So so what government side told you is that there is because there is a bond between China or this bond is vicious and after taking plan, suddenly people suddenly their relationship with West will start. There was no mechanism about for the sol as a solution for this problem that government side brought about today. So we told you how this is impossible to actually occur, and also we told you somehow. <coughs> also, the government side somehow told you keeping the status quo will, as a consequence, devastated country will occur, like using the example of Iraq. But we couldn't hear any mechanism why this would occur. But rather, we told you how gradual process is actually important to make situation better. We told you decreasing the amount is totally OK, because this is a responsible act from the society to just catch up the process. But because since we cannot recognize this democracy is enough, and, we, and because this gradual process is better to actually Make this continue very proud of us. Thank you. I thank the leader of the opposition for her remarks and now call upon the Prime Minister to conclude this round of debate with a four minute reply speech. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, life is all about timing. Say you have a feeling toward the girl with whom you really did not have much interaction with. 
But after some interaction, you hear that she is also starting to get this feeling towards you because she got to know you a little better. That is when you take an action, right? You do not wait for the girl to come up to you and say, I love you, right? In this case, West is a boy, Myanmar is a girl. And this debate is not about what the opposition sides think about the possibility of people of Myanmar not understanding democracy enough or not. This plan is all about what West wants of Myanmar, which is a reform to democracy in Myanmar, and what the people of Myanmar want, which is a better life, a life without restrictions on their fundamental rights. That future will not come with the military regime, the autocracy by them, but which will come that the people of Myanmar are still believing that it will come with the reform to democracy. That is what we need to be talking about. That is what we need to be focusing on, <coughs> right? And in this debate, we have told you how this plan will help and accelerate the reform in Myanmar. What we need now is development in Myanmar society so people can have a better life, right? For people to have a better life, we need to lift the sanctions, make more interaction with the West, make more trade with them, and be f to make a strong bond between the West and Myanmar. The opposition side, they did not tell us when actually they would actually lift the sanction, if not now. How the military regime, they said they've been keep, keeping and telling us that military regime will revive after plan, but they had no logic in there. Did they tell us how the military regime will come up? No, they did not. Right? We have, so we had to talk about what's best for people of, in Myanmar. The people in Myanmar believe that democracy will bring better life. Right? We could not see what the opposition side really wants. Do they want democracy in Myanmar or not? They say that without with democracy, people can have better life. But they also said that you know, because the bond between China is too strong, even after plan, it will not change. Are they saying that the strong bond with China will actually help them to turn to democracy on their own? We don't think so. We need the West to interact with Myanmar even more. So they will have better idea of what West really wants on them. So they will have better idea of democracy. And that will not happen without this plan, right? We have told you what sanction would do to the society in Myanmar we, with the example of Iraq. We have told you all those stuff, right? And we, ha uh, we have also told you how this is going to uh, weaken the bond between China, how this is going to make Myanmar come toward rest, Western society, come toward democracy, right? And we have told you that people of Myanmar are suffering <coughs> under status quo. That is why they are hoping for democracy. They want their fundamental right. They want democracy. They have, want better life. But the opposition side has been opposing us, but they did not say how that change would come without this plan. They did not really tell us how it is going to make that regime stronger after plan. Because change has finally come to Myanmar now, we believe that the West need to take action now. Thank you for listening. I thank the Prime Minister for his remarks, and I thank the debaters for a wonderful debate. And I invite Mr. Russell Ford to shake hands and ask the audience and the debaters to leave as quickly as possible to allow the judges to deliberate.